Hi guys, welcome to another short video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and here's another video in the series of my car boot sale finds. As you're aware, I, uh, I worked Saturday and I done an out and about film, so the stuff I uh, picked up Saturday I uh, included in the bit of a vlog out and about video that I done. I didn't get a great deal because I was selling in Bessemer. I picked up a few pieces in Spot Market in Cardiff and I included them in the video. But because I've had so much theft on my stall lately, um, I obviously I can't leave my stall to go looking. Um, I was selling again yesterday, which was Sunday, in Gethley Gay. Now, I have more theft again. I don't know what's wrong with people. Seriously, if you're that hard up, take the stuff. I'm trying not to get uh, annoyed about it, but that's twice now. Um, I had another crystal bowl stolen off me. Um, a beautiful that Dartington um, frosted dish in the box. Um, I put it down, put the took it out the box, put it on the box. I'm serving over here. Somebody walks it off over there. Left the box, just took the bowl. Um, so I don't know. I know what's going on with people at the moment. Maybe people are desperate. I really don't know, but. Uh, I'm not going to get annoyed over it, it is what it is, um, you have to obviously take into account theft um, as a normal at the moment on the markets, certainly when I'm busy. What I may do is turn my dash cam in my, in my car onto the stall, so I can't stop them stealing, but at least I can have a look to see who's doing it, uh, see if I can catch them if they're in view of the camera, so I may have a go that. Anyway, I'm not going to uh, be negative, I had a few nice little buys. Um, I'm more than happy with um, what I've purchased. Um, I'm not going to do my normal, which is zoom in on everything. I'm just going to pick a few bits up and then I'll do a close-up on some of the jewellery and some of the marks. I'll start off here now. Um, we have a piece of Spanish porcelain. Um, this is Neo by Ladro, not Ladro. Ladro is the dearer of the two makes. You have a little girl here holding the doll. She is a beautiful little thing, fully stamped on the base, in perfect condition. She cost me a fiver. Uh, all of this came out of Gethley Gay because I was working in Gethley Gay. Um, watched the stall. My friend who worked with me, she'd watch the stall. I'd be off buying. I'd come back, she'd go off buying. And throughout the day, this is what I managed to pick up while selling. Selling was fine as well, by the way. Um, Obviously I had the bowl pinched that I know of and I don't know what else they pinched. Um, but I do have a large stall. I have a 25-30 foot stall. So it's partly my own fault. Again we have another beautiful piece of uh, Spanish porcelain. Don't know how they managed to get the uh, glaze but it's so beautiful. There she is, little girl. Again fully marked. Again in perfect condition and was again a fiver. Ladro and Neo is one of the better selling of the Spanish porcelains. There are others, uh, Cassades and a couple of others. I do buy them and they do sell eventually. But the Ladro and Neo sells straight away. Um, if you see the Spanish porcelain, Ladro and Neo is the one to buy, but don't turn down the uh, other ones. You normally see them in clowns or animals and things like that. Still buy them if they're a pound or two because you can still get 10, 20, 25 pounds for a nice figure. I still buy it, so don't turn it down just because it's not a ladder or a nail. The amount of people that do is ridiculous. Next then we have a piece of 19th century Chinese crackle glaze. Um, now this one has a mark, character mark on the base. It's a nice hand painted design to the front. And as you can see the brown bands. Now these brown bands were basically to simulate the bronze of a much earlier period and all this crackling was intentional, again to make the vase look older than it actually was. We have here a nice battle scene, so this is quite a nice ginger jar, um, not going to be sold obviously as you're aware. Chinese is a subject I'm seriously struggling with, mainly because I don't have the time to just sit down and read the books for hours and hours and get into it. Um, what I find is I'll do an hour or two here, an hour or two there, and a lot of time I have to go back over what I've read because I've forgotten it, because I'm just so busy. My life is absolutely crazy, hectic. 
So I'm struggling with the Chinese at the moment. Um, but we all start somewhere. As long as I can pick the pieces up and learn, eventually I'll get there. It took me a while with the 18th century drinking glasses too, but I got there and now I'm, I'm good enough to make a good living on them. Right, um, obviously we have here my bread and butter, as I've told you many a times. Now, I bought these at the end of the day. They've been out on the table all day in Gethle Gay. Now, I don't know how many times I've got to say, guys, cut crystal is expensive. Now, I got three different pair here, um, and from what I understand, she had, must have been 30 to 50 single glasses uh, on the table at the beginning of the day. That's what she told me. Her entire table was nothing but crystal glasses. I obviously missed the stall and the dealers got to her before me, but these are what they left. Um, here we have beautiful cut, I think it's a champagne flute, or it could be a wine flute, by Edinburgh Crystal. Now, I've told you over and over, replacements.com, you can get your patterns and then you sell it depending on the rarity of the pattern. Now, believe it or not, you can sell one glass. Some people, depending on the pattern, get £20-£30 for one glass. Um, because people with sets break them. Don't leave a glass there, whether it's Waterford, or Edinburgh Crystal, whatever, just because it's a single. You still buy it. Um, yeah, don't leave them there, guys. As you can see, they were a pound. Uh, these were a pound of glass. I didn't pay a pound from. Uh, as I said, I bought them at the end of the day and she done me a deal of 50 pence a glass. But there's a pair of Edinburgh. Now I already know, without the box, without knowing the pattern, that's £12 for the pair. For 50p. Show me where you can put 50 pence into a pair of beautiful hand-cut, hand-made crystal vase, uh, drinking glasses and make that it money. Do you know what I mean? You put your 50p in the bank, what have you got? 51 pence in a year. Next we got a pair of wine goblets. Again, beautifully hand cut, produced Royal Dalton. Fully signed to the base, Royal Dalton Crystal. I don't know if you can see it there. All these, these are all top quality crystal. Again, 50 pence a glass. Going to be another 12 to 20 pound a pair. These I don't know who made them yet, um, they are almost a cathedral cut, um, but I haven't taken none of the price la labels off, nothing they could be signed under them yet for all I know. They look Edinburgh again, uh, it's a cathedral pattern, beautiful quality, again 50 pence each. I don't know how many times you'll say guys, Crystal is a good earner. People, they look at it, they can't tell, believe it or not, people can't tell the difference half the time between cut crystal and pressed glass. So you're buying it all for pennies. I buy sets of these in a box or out of the box for a pound or two. Some sets I, I put up for 60 or 70 pound. Really, look into your crystal. Um, you'll have some losses where it gets damaged or where you'll smash it. I had um, I done even done a video on it. I bought a set of six Edinburgh Crystal uh, champagne glasses in a box, never been taken out, wedding present. I only got two stalls and I dropped them, smashed two of them. Don't matter. Um, it happens, but they come in at the right money. Really cut crystal, especially if it's signed, you haven't even got to do any work. It is what it is. Just find the pattern, go to the website for the replacement glass or discontinued glass. Uh, get a pattern and you'll sell them easy enough. Right, next piece I'm going to show you is one of my favourite pieces of the day. Now, I may be wrong, um, but I don't, I don't think I am. It's definitely French. In my opinion, it's French. It's white opaline glass. It's hand enamelled in an opaque enamel and then gilded. Um, it's hand blown, it has a polished, large polished pontal mark to the base, hand cut around the top, applied handles, and beautiful gilding everywhere. No damage, the quality is superb. Now I believe this to be by Bakra. It isn't signed, could be wrong, it could be a Bohemian or something, um, but I believe it to be Bakra. Um, I'm obviously going to have to do research. Um, 
I'll just show you the quality of the rose on the stem, on the neck rather, and the painting. Really is beautiful. Um, it's six inches, six seven inches. Perfect condition, no damage. Turn of the century, 1880, 1900 ish. Um, if I'm wrong, fine. I don't mind being wrong. I can't know everything, but I do know it was a good enough piece to, um, to snatch up. It was a pound in Gethly Gay, about half past ten in the morning. All this hand painted, it's not a transfer, this is all hand painted, hand gilded, hand cut, hand blown in opaline glass. If it was signed, which I can't see a signature, plenty of way, but I can't see a signature, uh, then you'd be talking money. As it stands, just as a French opaline vase, hand painted, £45, if not more. Even if it turned out to be a bohemian piece, it's still opaline glass, hand painted, opaque enamels, hand gilded, hand cut. It ain't going to change the price, it's still a £45 plus piece. Very happy with that. Next piece I have is some Costa Boda, some animals. As you can see, it's been almost a glass day. Um, what are they, sea lions? They look like sea lions, could be wrong. I'm no animal expert, let me tell you. Um, all I know is they are top quality studio glass. They are from the World, or for the World Wildlife Fund, limited edition. By Costa Boda. Let's see if I can capture the uh, mark in by there for you. I don't know if, if you can see that or not. Um, they're beautiful pieces. They're a good weight. You know, they're not far off half a kilo a piece. Um, and I've had two of those. A slight variation. One's got cut in around the feet. The other hasn't. Um, may have been damaged at some point and they've sliced it smooth or it could be that it's a slightly different model to be totally honest with you i would probably go with the uh the first that at some point the foot got a bit damaged however somebody obviously loved it enough if that's the case to pay professionally for this to be done because this is a professional finish that's a lovely organic finish smooth polish so even if uh, it's been damaged and repaired, somebody's paid 30, 40 pounds to have it repaired. Um, beautiful piece. Two pieces of Costa Boda, fully signed, limited editions for a fiver. Where did I go wrong? I didn't. Happy enough, guys. Glass again guys, sorry it's all glass today, it's uh, been a glass day. Here we have another piece of French crystal. Now we have a candle holder, little uh, candle goes in there and obviously we have just a big ball of crystal. Now this one is produced by Dom of France. See the signature there. Now I paid a fiver for this one. Um, it is beautiful. However, since getting it on, I've knocked it and I've put a tiny fracture in the glass. Um, it certainly weren't there when I bought it because I would have seen it. It hasn't cracked, it is internal, it's in the glass. There's no hairline, there's no chipping, it is simply just a fracture inside the actual candle holder. So whether I sell it on or whether I keep it now, um, we'll see, I haven't decided. Now, I paid a fiver for it. If it sits on my cabinet, it is still a piece of Dom, crystal, French, beautiful. It ain't the end of the world. If I want to sell it, it's now a £10 piece because of the fracture. But I'll still double my money. Or worst case scenario, I put it back out on the car boot say, uh, car boot sale, say as found, ten pound, take eight or ten quid. It's not a problem. Um, but just having a piece of dom um, is enough. 
It's, uh, you know, it's one of them names that will drag them to your table. Then we have this. Now, I wasn't 100%. Was it Carnival Glass? Was it Victorian Luster? I weren't 100%. Um, now I'm of the opinion it is 19th century pink opaline glass. Um, it's pressed or moulded in one in a four-part mould. Moulded in a four-part mould has this beautiful, beautiful pink finish with uh, an opaque um, coming through it. So it's the pink and white finish. It's Beautiful piece, Hob hobnail uh, pattern on the base. It's obviously moulded. It's not cut, but it's a hobnail pattern. And then C scrolls. Um, you can see there, the jug is exquisite. I paid a princely sum of fifty pence. The jug is stunning. Now, what do I think it's worth? 45 to 50 pounds. I was 50p, guys. I'm confident you're talking 40 pound plus uh, for that. If it is carnival glass, then it's still going to be 30, 30 pound plus. But if I am correct in the fact it's um, rare Victorian pink opaline with the hobnail and C scrolling, then 40, 45 pound, no problem whatsoever. No chips or cracks, a couple of little rough parts, um, but no chips or cracks. I can't remember the last time I um, I had a piece of this pink opaline, uh, pink opalescent then if you like, um, glass. We'll see what happens, um, I'll do a little bit of research. I got one or two um, followers who are really well up on their glass, I'm sure they'll um, They'll text me and tell me if I'm right that it's um, a Victorian pink or pleasant. Um, so we'll see. The colour is so deep, it's unbelievable, it's beautiful. Um, but we'll go from there, we'll see what happens. Very happy with that. Um, we have a pair of late Victorian, early Edwardian silver plate knife rests. Um, now whether you see a pair of these, a singles, buy them because people collect them um, and if they only have one you may have the other to, for them to make up their set. Um, these were either one or two pound, I ain't 100%, I haven't got my book out a minute to uh, have a look how much I paid. Um, I buy stuff so quick and on the op sometimes can't always remember exactly what I paid, that's why you write it down. Um, they were either a pound or two pound for the pair. Really nice design on them. Um, I think they're English looking at them. Um, in good condition. They're going to be 12 to 15 pound all day long. But as I said, even if you find um, a single, buy it. You can put it in your, you know, your, your boxes on your car boot stalls for three pound or four pound for a single. People will buy them. I've seen them, I've seen them with ivory stems, I've seen them in gold, I've seen them in silver, gilding. I've seen some beautiful examples of knife rests. They're not something we use so much now, um, but when you're setting out the table, they are beautiful. As I said, they're nothing spectacular, they work in stock, but at the same time, they're going to sell relatively quick. Knife rests are something I have sold many times in the past. Next now guys, I'm going to move on and show you the little job lot of jewellery I've purchased. It's not tons um, compared to some of my other days, but I'm still quite quietly happy and confident with what I've um, purchased. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom the camera in just on the jewellery and I'll give you a little chart on the pieces and we'll, um, we'll go from there. Okay guys, I'm going to start off as you can see three gold bangles. Now, these are not solid 9 karat gold. Why is it not focusing? I'm in trouble with the camera focusing in a minute. I don't know why. What these are, are rolled gold. 
Uh, we have an 18 karat roll gold, we have a 10 karat and we have a 9 karat roll gold. They're all very, they're all very similar to the um, 9 karat solid golds. However, they're not worth anywhere near the same sort of money. Um, what I tend to do, these roll gold ones, they normally sell for a, well, a bangle like this will be 12 to 15 pounds. Um, it's got little teddy bears going all the way around it. I don't know why the camera isn't focusing on it today. Let's see if I can give it a bit more light. Will that help? Nope. For some reason, the camera will not focus on that bangle today. Anyway, guys, I paid a tenner for the three. Now, roll gold, you can scrap it the same as gold. It's not like gold plating. Gold plating has the finest micron of gold plate around, and they, they're not worth anything other than decorative value. But rolled gold actually has a percentage of gold. So if it's one tenth 18 karat gold, one tenth of the weight of that bangle is 18 karat gold. Um, all the bullion dealers now have started buying um, rolled gold. They pay on average a pound or a gram. But if you compare that to silver, it's still a good investment. These are all saleable pieces they can all be sold on so I'm happy with that but a tenner for the three bangles was absolutely fine here we have a couple of little gold earrings they're nothing special they come in they were 50p and there's 0.4 of a gram so this is about four or five pounds worth of gold nothing wrong with that what we have next guys is an amazing pair of solid silver earrings um, not a hundred percent on the uh, stone um, but as you can see spectacular fully hallmarked really really nice decorative large earrings um, these stones got to be two or three carats each um, don't know if these are diamonds I haven't tested them yet they more than likely cubic zirconia um, look at them earrings they were a pound guys in the box absolutely beautiful or what uh, we move on then to a solid silver and onyx ring now the lady was selling this I paid a fiver in Gethly Gear um, she was adamant it was silver although it's not hallmarked now I wouldn't normally pay a fiver for an unhallmarked ring and I wouldn't advise you to on the car boot sales. Um, but it had enough about it for me that I absolutely thought it was beautiful. Um, looked at how it was made, it's soldered up the back, um, the quality of the onyx. It's a really nice ring. Now I've since acid tested and it's come back it is sterling silver so that's fine. But I don't recommend you to do it. Um, as I've said I paid a fiver. But I've bought jewellery off this lady up in Gethlige before and it's all turned out to be good. So the way I looked at it, it didn't matter um, to take a chance. Um, she'd all, always had enough. She she wasn't known then to me for selling fake. Next year we have just cut, cut glass or crystal set in a solid silver in the form of a cross. As you can see it's beautiful. really nice fully stamped there nice chain stamp on the chain again but there not a huge weight I'm not buying it for scrap buying it for decorative purposes 50 pence guys at the end of the day from what I can see the people who go to Gethly Gay um, in the morning all the dealers are in every single jewellery box but the public must be so used to there being no jewellery left after the dealers have gone through where they don't even look um, I shouldn't be pulling solid silver out at the end of the day for 50 pence. I also pulled out for the other 50p off the same same lady a couple of odd earrings. Um, now there's a few grams, there's five or six grams here of silver, if not more. Um, all of it is stamped. Let's see if I can show you the stamps down on this corner here. And again, this one is stamped on the flat bit of the bar. Now, they were 50p. And there's five or six grams here. 
or of silver. Now if that's coming in at 10 pence a gram, I'm on a no lose, isn't I? Let's be honest. You can keep buying that all day long at 10 pence a gram, put it in a pot and forget about it for, uh, well, until you're ready to sell. We have a lovely citrine and cubic zirconia uh, ring. Yep. I presume it's a yellow citrine or green citrine, depending on how you look at the colour. It's a nice ring as you can see. It is stamped, this one. Uh, 925 but shockingly this one was a pound um, so I'm more than happy with that it's only a dress ring but still and then finally we have a me to you necklace little half a heart with a teddy bear on same best best friends uh, the little sterling heart it's fully hallmarked on the back 925 and that that was in the box and that again was a pound I hope you enjoyed having a little um, look at um, the buys from Sunday guys um, love the pink uh, opalescent jug some nice bits of jewellery even though they're not jump up and down uh, spectacular I love them the one pair of earrings is beautiful um, it's going to easily be 25-30 pound in my opinion I'm going to do some research on the opaline glass bars, see if it's Baccarat or French or Bohemian. Um, any advice is more than welcome, as you guys know. And that's uh, about it, really. Um, don't know what else to say in this video. I will be making a vlog now over the next day or so. It's just a general update on how things are going, how things are going with the diet, how things are going with work, everything. Um, we have another bank holiday weekend coming up this weekend. Um, so we're obviously Malvin's back on. Um, I'm going to get up to Malvin this time. Um, if I do, then I'm going to do um, a video of the day out up in Malvin. So hopefully uh, we'll get to get a Malvin. It depends on whether or not I have a babysitter for the children. So we'll see how that goes. Um, hope you've enjoyed having a look guys. If you have, I would appreciate a like and a share. Um, don't forget to subscribe, loads and loads of videos up now. Um, I try and do them as often as I can, at the moment it's been every day, but we'll see how long I can keep that up. Uh, but it will be as often as I can. Um, yeah. You'll find us on Facebook, Antiques Arena, we're on eBay, Antiques Arena Clearance, and we have our own website, antiquesarena.co.uk. Um, I've had a few people email me about my website, um, wanting to know what it looks like and things. So I'm going to do a little video uh, tomorrow, sh just showing you a little look at my website and some of the things I offer on there. So anyway guys, thank you very much for watching, thank you for your support, appreciate it, bye for now.